In this week's episode of Working with Evernote, I'm going to show you how and why you should have a Places Notebook. Hello and welcome to this episode of Working with Evernote. My name is Carl Pauline and in today's episode I want to show you a notebook that I have created that I find incredibly useful. Now this notebook is what I call my Places Notebook and for those of you guys out there who travel and particularly you travel a lot, it is one of those notebooks that can save you so much time. And what I want to do in this week's episode is to show you how I use my Places Notebook and maybe give you some ideas about what you could do to create your very own Places Notebook so that Evernote is using or doing what it is fantastic at doing, which is acting as your external brain. So before we go into Evernote though, I would just like to say if you do like this episode, Oh, please click on that like button below and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. Okay, let's go into Evernote and I will show you what I mean. Right, the first thing that you're going to need to do is to create a notebook and the notebook that I created for this is called Places. Now the reason I choose the word places rather than cities is because sometimes you might want to have a specific country in there or you might want a town and cities sort of like gets your mind thinking in a slightly different way. So I created one that's called Places. So double click on that and now I have uh, a number of cities. Now I only started this as I mentioned last September and so Hong Kong was the main one that I've created. Jamaica, I'll come to that in a moment and explain why that's there. London, Paris, Seoul which is my hometown and that's where I would just keep details of restaurants or places that I want to visit. I actually also keep suppliers that I want to buy in there. And Singapore, which is one that I actually want to do in the near future, as it is a country that I really enjoy visiting. Now, let's take a look at Hong Kong because this is the one with the most details. Now, the first thing I did, and actually when I created this note way back in September, I posted or placed a picture of the metro, the Hong Kong metro, in the note. Now, what you're probably thinking right now is, well, isn't that a bit small to read? And that's true, it is. However, I actually put the full image in and I think it's about 1,500 pixels across. So all I need to do is tap on it once and you'll see that I get the plus sign. If I tap on it again, that will now come up and I can zoom in. I can zoom in even more and I can get uh, the details that I want and all I have to do is use my trackpad and I can zoom in wherever I want and I can move it around if I use three fingers. Uh, this will be different of course if on your trackpad. So up and down with two fingers it will go large and small and three fingers moves it around. So I can actually check to see where it's where I'm going. So uh, I know that Mong Kok Hotel where I stayed at last September is in this area and there was places that I wanted to go to down here, central, and I actually wanted to go over to somewhere around here. I can't remember, I think it's Lam Tim, or somewhere like that, or Chung Kong. I can't remember exactly, but that's where I was visiting. And that's one of the ways why I put the map. So when you look at the map here, it looks very, very small. And I've done the same for London, for when I travel to London. The London subway map is there. Again, one tap brings up the plus. That actually takes me in, and again, I can zoom in, and I can zoom out. And move it around so uh, tap 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 and I can move around here and see where I'm going so although on the surface it looks like it's quite small so when if you are going to do this what I would suggest you do is get a picture of the full the full map and then you can reduce it down when you add it into the note so when you tap on it once you get these this figure here you can reduce it right down to something really small but then when you tap on it it will come up with the big and you can tap on it again and again and again and again and get in really close and then you can move around and have a look at your subway map. When you're finished you just hit the cross and that's it and you're out. And 
So let's go back to my Hong Kong one. And what I really want to do is I want to show you a new one. So what I'm going to do is click plus and I'm going to type in, let's say, uh, Berlin. So let's say Berlin is a city that I want to visit and I've got some information I want to add. Now, what I've done is I've created a template in my templates gallery and my templates is here. So I click on my templates and you'll see that I have travel. So I click on that one and now I've got the place headings that I want in my notes. So I've got travel here, which is where I would put the map. I've got hotels that I might want to stay at. I've got restaurants that I might want to visit and then places to visit. So that's my, my basic note that I have and I can add details as and when. So let me take you to the Hong Kong one because that's the one I updated most recently. So here I've got three hotels. Now, I've got to ex I, I must confess, I stayed at the Holiday Inn Express Mong Kok and that's just a direct link to their website so I can just make a reservation very easily. I also have the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. Now that's actually a five star hotel and I have stayed, into, stayed in it for two nights way back in 2001. Beautiful hotel, amazing views across the harbour. But the one here, the Peninsula, now I've never stayed at that one, but that one is actually very, very famous in Hong Kong. Anyone who knows Hong Kong, they know that the Peninsula Hotel is very, very famous. But for me, the Peninsula Hotel is the one that was in The Man with the Golden Gun, which is a James Bond film. And it's very famous for its green Rolls Royces. And it's one of the hotels in the world that I really want to stay at. So I've got it in there. I can't afford to stay in it at the moment, but maybe one day I will be able to afford to stay in the peninsula and I will stay there. The other thing that I've added in here, and I added this back in September, was these two restaurants. And again, this takes me to their websites or to their travel advisor website so I can get the maps that I need. And I'm a big fan of Hong Kong dim sum. And so this one is an amazing restaurant for dim sum. If you're ever in Hong Kong, the Ding Dim 1968, a oh, fantastic restaurant for that. We stayed in, we had some lunch there. And the Shim Chai Ki is a traditional Hong Kong noodles, which again is absolutely so delicious. So I put those restaurants in there when I got back. I just took a picture of the menu and then when I got back, I found them online and now I have a direct link that I can go straight to. And remember, when you're using this on a mobile device, which is what you're most likely to do, it's just one click and it takes you straight there. Places to visit. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get time when I was in Hong Kong to go to the 10,000 Buddha Monastery, but it is a place I really want to go to. And next time I'm in Hong Kong, I know I need to make plans to go there. The Apple Store at the International Finance Centre Mall is where I actually got my Apple Watch 4. And uh, it's just one of those amazing Apple stores. It's on two floors and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I was just amazed when I was there. Everyone was so friendly. It was so nice. And I thought, yep, I'm going to put a place placeholder to that so that I know where it is, how to find it, and so on. Now, I've got one for London, which is my hometown. And again, as I said, I've, I've got the map in here that I can actually double click on and get the full size. I've also got, as you'll notice here, and I've got the same for Paris, actually. I'll show you the one for Paris. I've got the Paris subway map, of course. I've got two hotels. Now, the one here, the Best Western Hotel Jardin de Cluny, is one that I stayed in uh, about five or six years ago. It's a nice, clean hotel and very close to the metro station. I've also got the Ibis Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport Hotel. And I've stayed at this hotel twice and it's just outside the airport and it has a shuttle bus and that is really useful. Now Paris is one of my favorite cities in the world and so what I really wanted to do was get that hotel in there so that I could uh, stay in it if I wanted to stay overnight or stay for a couple of days in Paris. I can actually go to in, get into Paris by bus, it's not too long and I can then have a, a say an afternoon or a day in Paris and then come back to the airport and fly out the next morning. Restaurants here uh, the Le Café de Marche, Le Café de Marché, I'm not sure, which is actually very close to the Eiffel Tower, is a cafe that I had lunch at, oh, again, about seven or eight years ago with my wife, and it's just on the edge, and you can sit outside, so you can watch the world go by, and it's just an amazingly beautiful cafe, and of course, the food is fantastic. And the Paul Bakery 
is a recommendation to me to try their pan au chocolat, which is one of my favorite French foods. And of course, the croissants and the bread and things like that from that particular restaurant. Very, very famous restaurant in Paris. And of course, that is there so that next time I know I'm going to Paris, I can just come into this note and say, yes, I must find a Paul bakery. And places to visit, which is the Louvre Museum, uh, which is one of my favorite places in Paris. It's just an amazing place, particularly outside with the pyramid and that courtyard. It is just incredible. So that's what I have for Paris. Now, before I finish this episode, what I really would like to do is show you why I have Jamaica in there. Now, for those of you who know me, that have been following me for a number of months or gone through a number of my videos, you will know that I am a big fan of James Bond. Now, James Bond was written by uh, the author Ian Fleming, and I have read almost, well, pretty much every book ever written about Ian Fleming. He's one of my writing heroes. I just love the way he can describe people. Now, he built, uh, he had a, a bungalow built in Jamaica in a place called Ora Capessa, and it is now a hotel resort which celebrates all things about James Bond and it's one of those places in the world that I really want to visit. I want to spend a week there. I want to write a book in that area. I know it's going to take longer to week than a week to write a book but I would just love to go to GoldenEye Resort and stay there. And one of the things is on here, I'll just zoom in here, you'll see um, the Fleming Villa, which is here. I don't know if you can actually see that on your screen, but the Fleming Villa is here, and the Honey Child, which is the name of a character in Doctor No, and Fleming Beach is here. And those are the places that I really, really want to stay at and to visit and to have a walk around. It would just be, uh, it's on my bucket list, and that's why I've got there. And it's one of the reasons why this is here, although I'm not planning on going any time in the near future. Um, but I also want to visit the Firefly Villa, which was Noel Coward's former home, which is just down the road from Goldeneye. So I have this in here as a place to visit because it is a place to visit, which is why I don't call this notebook cities because there are countries in here. And of course, I've got one for my hometown, Seoul and Singapore, which is a place that I want to go to sometime in the near future. And that's really about it. Now, the only other thing I wanted to point out on this is, now this is in alphabetical order, I can, uh, and I've updated all of these today, so that's why the date is showing. But if I wanted to, I could actually just uh, change that and I could actually put it in reverse order. You can change the title order however way you want, just by clicking on the title bar there, or if you wanted update, but all mine have been updated today, so that's it. So there you go, that's how I have set up my places notebook as I said I have created the notebook right here I have just clicking my notebooks it's right there I've now got seven places in there Berlin actually is a place that I want to go to I think I'll be passing through this year at some point so I will actually start adding stuff in there like hotels and places like that and so it's a really really useful notebook and if you think about whatever note is supposed to be used for which is your reference library your external brain this is one of the reasons why I think Evernote is just fantastic. And this is one of the areas that Evernote is just brilliant at doing. OK, I hope this has given you a few ideas of how you can develop your very own places notebook. And it just remains for me now just to wish you all a very, very productive week. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked what you saw and you would like to learn more about becoming better organized and more productive, then get yourself enrolled in my free beginner's guide to creating your own COD system. And if you'd like to learn more about how I can help you, then visit my website at carlpauline.com. All the details are in the show notes below.